Peace is your brother, Mass Quasi. Um, I'm tonight. We have a special guest that's coming on tonight. It's a brother. It's a brother that I've known about for quite a few years. Uh, probably about over seven years ago, uh, I started looking at the repat movement, repatriation movement when I was in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, Brother Bomani was like the number one guy, still is, in the repatriation movement. And I'm waiting for him to come in here. However, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, um, his his uh you know his journey his journey you know and uh his successes you know for a long time a long time this brother's been uh going hard making it happen and it's you know any type of business you have any type of business you have it's not an easy thing you know when you're building businesses and you know uh you know networking and putting things together and making all of those calls and everything that it takes to uh, go into a business you know it's not easy and then, you know, the, the movement, the movement in him, you know, starting out in the movement, you know, years and years ago, that's this foresight and vision. That foresight and vision has allowed many, many others to come in, uh, behind, to come to the continent and, uh, you know, make a, make a change and get away from Western society, get away from the hustle and bustle, get away from that, you know, that uh, matrix mindset. You know, everybody chasing, you know, the dollar, chasing the job and, you know, working the 40 year plan, working 40 hours a week to retire for 40 percent of what you were living off of uh, day to day. You know, it's madness. It's madness in the West. You know, I was just speaking to a friend of mine and he told me, hey, my, my daughter got shot. I was like, <laughs> but we always hear these stories. We always hear these tragedies, you know, in the states, in the, in the, in the black community because of all of the disorganization and the, uh, the self-hate, the self-hate that has uh, been fed to us as a, a culture, you know, uh, through slavery, coming up through slavery and being brought into a land that's ours, that's not ours, under very uh, extreme circumstances. I have to actually send this link out. So let me go ahead and uh, send this link out to the brother. And Bomani, I've been wanting to speak to Bomani for a long time. He was a brother that I've, uh, you know, like I said, I was watching from Atlanta, you know, seven years ago before I ever came over for the first time. You know, he was one of the brothers that inspired me to, uh, you know, to actually make that move and actually come over. And it's been a long time. He's been doing it for quite a long time. I came over seven years ago. He's been doing it before me. And he's always had his packages and his tour packages. And um assalamu alaikum sutu sinjang how are you welcome to uh go hard gambia and uh we're just sitting and we're waiting right now to for a brother to come on i'm gonna grab me some tea right quick i actually have some food coming the, in, the internet was is uh going kind of slow so if i'm blurry you know please uh get, forgive me and uh you know like i said i've been really pushing and trying to make myself available to uh, the people out there because you know it's just a it's a lot going on, and I think we should have variety in terms of you know uh, you know who you uh, you know who you see you know it shouldn't be any one person two or three people, and and and, and making ourselves available to the public we should do it in a way where we um, you know we don't do it in a way that becomes the divisive so I you know I'm not about that I never I have been about that. So, you know, we want to be able to move forward. Like, you know, anybody that's a subscriber to my channel and seeing, you know, I'm going to tell you how it is. You know, I've been over here for long enough. We're going to talk about that with uh, Bomani and just the movement and the changes that we've seen, you know, uh, since we've had large scale uh, adoption of this movement and having people come over. Every day I see uh, repats, <clears throat> I go through, I see them. I'm not as active as I, I used to be uh, with dealing with that community because of, uh, you know, obvious things that taking that's taking place that, uh, you know, that's bringing about the vision and the movement. You know, uh, and we see this, we see this pattern. We've seen this pattern of, uh, you know, uh, disruption in the movement. And, you know, um, once a lot of people uh, started coming, of course, you're going to have people that want to, be a part of this movement in any way they can, you know, and that, uh, the, uh, and, and the vast majority of a lot of people that's watching on, they're just spirit busters. They're people who want to, 
uh, latch on to the movement and, and take from the movement and take and discourage and, you know, uh, come and play the whole, you know, favoritism, you know, uh, you know, clout chasing and, you know, if, and, and getting with the wrong types of people and the wrong types of crowd and they don't really have a true agenda. So, you know, nonsense start, people start talking about each other and all that starts stuff flowing around. Don't talk to this person. Don't deal with that person. And, and, you know, you have people who are coming over that are, you know, just a continuation. That's a mosquito I was actually trying to kill. Just a continuation of what we see in the States. A continuation of the division that we see in the States coming here. You know, I don't really care to speak about anything. You know, I, I promise you, I wouldn't, you probably, if, 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 I, if there wasn't a need. And what I mean by a need, because you have people out there trying to destroy and to uh, tarnish the reputation of decent people, you know, and, you know, I was a victim of that. All of us are uh, become every single person, you know, uh, that, that has been doing something, you know, uh, in one way, shape or form over the last year, found themselves in a, uh, a situation where, you know, there's been, you know, uh, defamation. So, you know, uh, right now, you know, Brother Bomani, my internet was acting crazy. So, Sutu Singh Jang, Salam Alaikum. Where, where are you located? Are you here in the Gambia? Let me just get myself prepared for the brother when he comes on. Family, family, I'm still here. I'm just preparing myself. If you guys are watching, I promise you, if you have any questions, you guys put it here in the thread. You know, I'll address some questions. If anyone have any questions for me, you know, uh, it's important that, you know, we work together to, you know, uh, create a positive impact here and on the continent. And I see Bomani, he's logging in now. It's uh, and it's even it's become even more of a demand for that to happen, with all of the turbulence that we're seeing in different markets. Well, Monty, are you there, sir? I'm not set up yet. I mean, okay. I'm here. I'll give you a few minutes, okay? I'd absolutely. Uh, I'd just Okay, so he's getting ready. I'm gonna get some tea as well. We're gonna have a conversation. It's gonna be awesome. I promise you, just uh, stand by one second. Yes, we spoke. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, we, we need, and I saw you, uh, I, I was looking and doing some research. I saw you out there and you, you spoke a little bit about, um, <clears throat> you know, just brothers of the like, like mind actually taking the high road and things and, you know, mediation. And that's one of the things that we're working on. Uh, you know, we want to be able to create in associations, institutions, and, you know, uh, different portals for mediation for people, for people to, uh, you know, have an outlet when the situations, you know, when they come up, because we cannot be in a whole nother uh, country conducting ourselves as in the States. A white man, Caucasian man wrote a post and he was like, you know, basically, you know, uh, the, the brothers and the sisters and the uh, black Americans have a bad reputation. And, you know, uh, 
what we're seeing here in the Gambia that we have an opportunity to start over. This is we said he's saying we have an opportunity to start over, you know, uh, as Black Americans here in the Gambia. So we don't want to continue that same pattern of self-destructive behavior that you know uh, we are known for in the West that has decimated our populations, you know, and, and throughout the world because you know a lot of you know most of the world follow. Uh, the, the U.S. culture, you, you know, uh, Black American, that's one of the most uh, duplicated, you know, uh, cultures in the world. You know, you have people all over the world, China, you know, Asia, different parts of, you know, the world, Africa, you know, all emulating, you know, uh, you know, Black American, Black America. And I see uh, Romani uh, coming in there now. So uh, let me see if he's he's ready. I don't know if he held on. Let's see. Yeah, a few minutes. Um, I was caught off guard. With this stuff. Yeah. More? All right. All right. All right. Cool. All right. So you know, I've been I've been trying to uh, link with Bomani for years, and he's an extremely busy brother. Ever evolving. G. What's up? What's up? Peace, peace. You know. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming on. And uh, as I've been uh, saying in the past, I'm making a commitment to uh, make myself present. I work on my camera and I work on all the other stuff that you guys need to have a, you know, perfectly clear presentation. Thank you, Ever a Revolving G, for, you know, uh, you know, making a comment and making yourself known. Any questions that anybody have, you know, uh, I've been here for quite some time. You know, for years after coming seven years, going on eight years now, I have children, I have family here, and I have a great life here. Unlike many repasts that come, they run into trouble. They run into trouble. They run into drama. But when you do the uh, research, you'll find that most of these repasts, <laughs> most of these repasts, Hold on one second. I'm coming back to the mic. Okay, I just had to get my nice my nice tea going. But most of the time, most of the people that come over here uh, that have problems, they have problems in the States. You know, uh, problems, you know, uh, social problems, emotional problems, uh, mental problems, financial problems. When you see people coming, a lot of people coming over as tourists, and, uh, you know, and it's a culture amongst tourists to go to different countries and to party. You know, you, you've never seen me do a video in any club here. I, I've never, you know, you hardly see me do any video, but... I'm not here as a tourist, you know, I'm here as somebody that wanted to come and uh, or who has come, I've established myself. I have a track record for actually coming and doing the work of a Pan-Africanist. But over the years, what we've seen, we've seen a lot of people that have come in and they can't, they come in as tourists, they come in as sex, sex tourists, you know. Uh, some of the main troublemakers last year, you know, end up telling on themselves come out with a whole video about all the corruption and everything that they have going on here. Jason King, is Gambia more affordable than Ghana? Uh, I, I think, I, I can't really say, I, I was looking at some, it depends where you are. If you in Accra, you know, it's gonna be higher in the problem. If you're further out, it's gonna be lesser. You know, uh, it gets expensive in Gambia. However, I do like the, the vibe of Gambia because it's less westernized. You know, it's more, you know, it's more uh, more cultural. Ghana is more like U.S. You know, you see the sisters with perms. You see a lot of Christianity. Uh, what type of tea is this? This is chamomile. I'm drinking that chamomile. Right. We got a moringa tree outside, so we we make that happen too. Moringa tea. You know. Um, Thanks for your help when I was there you, you, all day, all day, you know, and, and as everybody know, you know, I help people. I helped a lot of people, you know, I help a lot of people come over by 
having conversations with them, encouraging them to come over, you know, uh, setting up logistics, picking them up from airports, you know, uh, bringing them care pack, uh, packages. Yes, that's right. Thelma Mill is calming, you know, so however, I helped a lot of people. But, you know, like I said, if I had to do it over, over again, I'm very cautious, very cautious, because a lot of the people that came over, you know, they, you know, uh, very disappointing, very disappointing characters. And, uh, you know, but I don't even like to talk about it. I just, you know, I moved on from all of that. You know, if, if you don't, if you have a problem with me, you know, just don't deal with me. Don't watch my channel. Unsubscribe from me. You know, keep my name out, out your mouth. I'm not talking about nobody. You want to stay? I don't have no time for that. You know, keep your drama to yourself. Don't try to cover up your madness by trying to get me into this. Like a lot of crazy stuff. I wish I really didn't help a lot of people. Honestly, you know, I would I would have been better off not helping them. Yeah, that's nice. You know, so Bomani is a brother. Like I said, I've been watching from Atlanta. I was watching him years ago. Uh, many people don't know I was involved. I was a part of a very large organization years ago, uh, a Facebook group that had over 40,000 followers. And I helped, you know, build that group up. And I ended up having the same type of problems with the, uh, the person who had the group. You know, they were up there and they were they, they had all of these people and they were constantly up there creating content, but they wasn't really for the people at all. He was actually he was actually uh, just looking for an opportunity to take people money because he was unorganized, you know, so. I just got an email. Let me see if the brother's ready yet, you know, uh, and that's what you get. That's what you see. I mean, the vast majority of the community are uh reeling from initial upset of being misled and i'm going to say that again the community here is reeling from the initial upset of being misled so you had uh you know uh people out here you know it's just a negative toxic environment uh just like in the states just like in the states and i never thought i'd be uh saying something like that and you know bomani him himself you know uh having some controversy with people that are dissatisfied with the service or uh had a problem with something but in any case you know things should be handled in a uh, a particular way and i know myself that uh you know when a situation i had you know uh, it was all lies and drama and you know still the ones who are accountable for it which is are many have yet to be held accountable and in fact are still uh per, um masquerading around as if they're pan Africanists and they're blameless. But then, you know, now everybody is seeing all of this drama that has, you know, surfaced from the first wave of repats came over there that came over that, uh, you know, had all of this uh, YouTube camaraderie and everybody supporting one another. And they was, they was, <laughs> they was right in the midst of uh, a bunch of toxic people that was actually getting over and robbing uh, the, the initial people that came over. So it's been a drama. I'm actually going to do a little book to talk about it. However, I think, you know, for the most part, like me, with, with my situation, I am, I, I'm, I will never go back to the States. I'll never go back to the States after what I've seen in the States over the past you know, my lifetime, the past 30 years, the past 20 years, it's been, it's not been a situation that's been good and productive and move on our, our people forward. You know, it's, um, it's a, a continuation of a, a decline in uh, civilization as well as uh, financial and uh, social uh, order. So, I mean, most of us know that, you know, America is heading for, uh, you know, Collapse. I mean, it had it had its hey, heyday. You know, at one time, America was seen as this, you know, uh, this great world power of justice, freedom, justice, and equality. You know, Lady Liberty and, and things like this. And then uh, over the years, America just have taken a dark, dark turn, a very dark turn in terms of you know uh, its ideals and their value systems. 
and you know, within our community, I mean, you know, the town that I come from, when I went back and I go back to my town, you know, there's a lot of death. It's always been death and there's a continuation of death. You know, not only is it still the shootings, you know, you got women shooting each other. And we had a little bit of that back in the day, but now, you know, and it's, uh, there's not many people left to even be shot, you know? The streets are like ghost, ghost town. And then you have the drug epidemic and fentanyl. Right, exactly. <laughs> Especially with Biden handing out uh, uh, crack pipes. I don't know what that one is about. Maybe you can elaborate on that. But you know, uh, George Bush and Reagan, those were two of the biggest drug dealers in the, in the cocaine history. You understand what I'm saying? That, and it all came out in Congress. Nobody's been punished for that, for killing up our community. Again, that good camel mill. Hold on one second. Let me, brother, could you hear me? Okay, you ready? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, but how are you, brother? Uh, greetings, family. Uh, good, to, um, good to connect with you. I'm doing well. Just want to make sure you can hear me loud and clear and everything is good. Yeah, everything is loud and clear. You know, uh, could you hear me loud and clear? Am I, am I fuzzy or blurry or are you seeing me clearly? Or Everything is uh, consistent, audio and video. Okay. All right. Kiki Love Nigeria. What's up, Kiki? And I, I always... Uh, <laughs> You know, I always show Kiki love because uh, Kiki was integral. You know, like yourself, you know, uh, last year, you know, we come under attack as leaders. And it's, it's never the first time for us. It's never, never the first time. You know, so it's, it's every year. I tell people every year it's always, you know, some bull BS that comes out of uh, when you're dealing in large networks and dealing with people. And, you know, you're in trying, to, try, uh, trying to empower people. You know, and you're bringing them in, and then there's a certain level of exposure that we get when we do that. You know, but uh, yourself, I've been watching you since I was in Atlanta. You know, uh, it, it had to be at least seven years. I can remember, you know. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, this brother got his tra travel tour shit together, you know. <clears throat> and I was watching from Atlanta, and uh, I came over seven years ago, but you were uh, one of the... I never really wanted to do a, a, a tourism company and bring people over on tours. You know, my thing was to come over. But I was like, you know, when I saw how you had everything going, how it packaged up, I was like, hey, you know, this is the type of thing that we need. So how long have you been doing Africa for the Africans, brother? Oh, uh, yes, uh, family. And I'm just making sure I grab your link right here. Yeah. Um, you've been doing Africa for the Africans, brother. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Just pausing your link. Yes, uh, uh, crazy. Um, the journey as um, let me even take it back to I started traveling to Africa in 2004, but I started Africa for Africans in 2006. Okay, 2000. 15 long years uh, doing these journeys. Yes, 15 years, 15. 15 years, and I've taken people to seven different countries, and I've traveled to a total of uh, 10 different countries over 18 years. You know, you know, when you have someone who has a track record for us uh, like that, you know, it speaks for itself. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, you know, I'm always, I always look for, you know, the work that a person is doing, and we should be commended for the works that we're doing, especially as black men. You know, but you know, uh, you know, in America, you know, you we will never get the respect that we uh, should get or be able to hold the or get the esteem that we should have in, in that construct so uh, many of us are coming to africa so that we can be these powerhouses that we are you know and uh in that process you know it, it takes a lot of work so you know you started your organization back in 06 right yes absolutely out of atlanta uh yes out of atlanta uh, out of uh jonesboro here on the south side you know, I, I was living in Atlanta for 16 years, man. <laughs> I was there in Atlanta. And Atlanta was the black mecca for uh, a long time, but that's changed. Now, Africa has become that place. So, and, 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 uh, and being that that's, uh, you know, uh, 
Okay, hold on one second. Did you guys hear that? Uh, yes, I can hear it. Okay. Let me cut off my Facebook. You know, I'm, I'm just really, really getting into this YouTube, man, because, you know, I've really been in behind the scenes, and I've helped people who have YouTube channels. <laughs> Let me get my laptop. <laughs> All right. I've been, you know, I've always been behind the scenes, you know, working and building. And since I've been here in Gambia, I've worked with some influential people here, you know, uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and but however, there came a need for me to make more content because, you know, uh, people need to have variety. They need to see what's going on, you know. So uh, right now, brother, you know, as far as the movement is concerned, what have you seen? You know, uh, you know, since the the year return and since after the lockdown and you and a lot more people have been coming over. What have you been seeing? Is yes, what I'm seeing through? really is just more and more people <clears throat> being interested in the in in a, in a movement that has been going on for a long time, and so you know that's the good thing about it. You have a lot more people that's interested in it. But as far as uh, people just organically wanting to connect and literally just build. And, and and do something more on our group economics. It's not so much that, but the greatest thing is the interest is there. So as organizers uh, like myself, yourself, and uh, others that I've been traveling back and forth uh, to the African continent and I've connected so many people, you know, we can use that to our advantage and put things in place there. So what I've done in Ghana is built the Black Star Pan-African community. And mm -hmm. right now it's an, uh, org it's a, private organization where it's uh, 50 of us and we're all investors. We put our money together to pay for 15 acres of land. And then also we have uh, reorganized our profits to also invest in another 60 acres of land. And that's also for, that's all for our, you know, it's community development, but also the bigger <laughs> land, 60 acres. It's also for commercial development. So we're looking to get into, you know, things to where you can bring companies who are interested in manufacturing, and you know, straight up this industries, and then also this any individuals who want to put their money together and build that energy. And also, we have a beach access to the to the actual town, so we're looking to okay. get that um, organized on a survey to see how big it is, and just reach out to you know, reach out to groups of brothers and sisters who want to build resorts, build a beach town, or want to invest in the future of just you know, what we can do together as a people. So what I'm trying to do is get more of us to not only just be excited about Africa but also to invest in Africa. So we have everything set up to where we help people with from basic things from visas to residency to getting your, your, your survey to your deed of the land that you acquired to Black Star Pan-African community and to also connect you with builders that can help you build. And also if you need a temporary house to stay at for six months to a year, you know, we have another community across from where we are and we'll just work out the uh, negotiations and get you set up there. We have shippers that can get you things shipped over and connect. And then ultimately, you know, we have tours. If you're just not clear about what's going on, you come on a tour, you check it out, you check out a business conference, you check out a land tour and you, you know, connect with people and you put it together. But all phase of what we have, we help people 100%. So 100% of everybody that we do business with should be happy, should salute me, should shake my hands and say, brother, you have done well. And we appreciate your struggle and your work. But the real world of things is that's not how it is. You don't always get the respect and the, you know, the commendation right. that you deserve. So what you end up having is you may have one or two crazy people who come at you the wrong way and cause issues and problems. And that's what you get in this business. So sometimes, yeah. you know, so people like myself, you know, you're doing it for a bigger reason. You're not doing it for any, any accolades or anything. You're doing it because you're building something, number one, for your family, your brothers and sisters, and ultimately for your race of people from the African diaspora and the African continent to show that we can put our money together and we can get involved in major business. We shouldn't have to just depend on the Korean, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Indians to come into different parts of Africa um, you know, add the Lebanese and other Arab groups to that and just other nations. We shouldn't have to depend on them to come in and build major industries. Uh, people like myself got into this business to, to get more into real estate development and also industrial development because I see the need for those things. And instead of just hoping and praying uh, and just 
pe for people to just figure it out. You got to get out there and put the work in. So that's what we have done. And when you get out there and put the work in, you're going to have people who look at themselves like, oh, my God, I'm the same age as this guy. And he's been, you know, he's doing this. And, um, you know, so and they, they decide to, you know, you can either connect with us or some people decide to just come at us. So uh, I'm also connecting information into this, what people let people know what we're doing. We're, we're building an operation, but we're also real people and we're going through real things. So when yeah. people see me and your name on 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 the uh, on this video, they're gonna be like, you know, they're gonna tie us into other things, you know. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the thing that always alert people is drama, you know, because yeah. you and I have a ridiculous amount of videos on YouTube, but sometimes people skip over those and then they look for ones that you know with our names and things. So what I'm also telling people is that while we're building what we're building, we're gonna have fools come at us the wrong way and do certain things. It's up to you, the audience, the viewers to do your research on the people that are doing certain things and find out what is their motive, what's the why, you know, what what well, do they know, have to offer you? You know, brother, I, I think at the end of the day, right, you know, the majority of our people really don't want to see forward progress. And we're talking 70, 80 percent of our people. And that's even the people that are coming. And I, I've seen it and I, I've had my share of drama where, you know, uh, you know, but like I said, the, the whole mixture was toxic. You know, from, you know, and I, I was building, you know, with, with major YouTubers here. And, you know, I, I've seen problems within those organizations. And then I, I saw that it was going to be uh, an escalation of those problems because we don't have people who are sincere and who are true, true to heart about this uh, Pan-African uh, movement. You know, they're just here trying, looking for a business, looking for a source of income, looking to have fun, looking to hang out, looking at tourism. They don't really have a true heart and mind for uh, black unity. They don't see themselves as Africans. They see themselves as Americans, and that's how they are treating uh, the, the, the brothers and sisters here on the continent. You know, uh, with the, you know, they have an arrogant, uh, you know, disposition about themselves. You know, uh, that are coming, and um, you know, I, I put brother Goham lifestyle vlogs. Check him out. You know, <laughs> Kate. Uh, Right, you know, Mr. Bronze, you know, this brother right here, you know, he, I've been speaking with him for about four or five years before I came. He, he's dealt with the drama. And our people should, you should, you know, see, have eyes to see, you know, but like I said, we get caught largely up in drama, especially with YouTube. It's about, you know, uh, drama and entertainment. However, this is a real movement. And you Absolutely, know, brother. That's, that's what it is. And this that's why I'm telling people that uh, this is, you know, this is not just something, you know, we're not entertainers, you know, we're building right. a real black power connection. Right. You, you know, and, it, and it's, uh, like I said, you, you, you have people like, I spoke to a lot of people in, in my, in my role, uh, you know, uh, being a leader here in the movement for a while before, you know, uh, you know, uh, I removed myself from that position. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I came over with really a, a, a pan-African in spirit, you know, all, all embracing spirit. And I tell people all the time at this house, I had some a, a lot of high profile people at this house, you know, and even before they even really got big in YouTube. But once that YouTube celebrity came, everything changed, man. And everybody, you know, uh, like I said, saw and see the drama that, uh, that 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 that's taking place here in other parts, you know that that that, that don't even exist. You know the drama is coming from the people coming over here lying about brothers and sisters that over here actually got it going on and doing things and doing what they're supposed to do. But all of these agents are over here trying to undermine that. You know, however, at the end of the day, like I said, I wouldn't go back. My experience been great with the drama. You know, my lifestyle is two or three times greater than it was in the states, and it's only looking more promising and you know I, what i've learned is that i have to actually keep mo most of that away from youtube because people hate on that you know and people that came around early on and see my lifestyle and see how i had it going on and things they had so much hate to see a brother doing well and that's one of the things we have to get over as a community yes yes brother i appreciate your efforts in working in gambia because the only thing that's going to do is help us grow better so I'm always in full support of my brothers that's making certain moves and things. And, you know, we don't always have to agree on things, but, uh, you know, I do feel like we have to do a 
united front because we have common uh, enemies coming against us for the same purpose, for, to literally distract a movement and literally because they can't do what we're doing. Like I literally see, you know, and it's one of those things where, especially we as men, you know, you know, we have to be strong and be leaders. We have to just put our family, our future, our race, our people in a position of being successful. So that's why we have, that's why we're trying to keep this bridge strong because what's going to happen to our children? What, where are they going to work at? What's their opportunity? How, what kind of life are they going to be able to live? I, I, tell, I tell people all the time, right? I went back uh, to uh, the States early in the year, right? And, you know, every time I go, I help people. And, you know, I actually had a problem with one of my nephews. You know, I did, I did something for him and things like that. But, you know, two of my nephews I had a problem with. Two of my nephews. And I was like, you know, I'm talking about a serious problem. And I, and I was like, you know, I can't even come home and, and, and enjoy my family and my nephews and be, you know, uh, admired for, for beating the odds. You understand? They, you come back, you owe them something. They want, you know, and, and that's the type of mentality that in the generational curse that we want to, to end. Uh, Solomon the Gambia, thank you, brother, for all your uh, hard work and dedication. This brother's been around years and years and years working with me. I was speaking with a brother the other day. He's actually in a thread. He was like, Quasi, every time I see you, you doing something, you're giving instructions. I, I, see, I see people in the background moving and shaking. Yeah, because we're making it happen. Look at other people. There's other people that's on this right now, on this live, listening to every... I don't see how people have that much time to look at all of these videos and be involved with this YouTube. You know, that's the job for them. And then they take pieces and snip and cut it together and put it on their channel to try to steal some of our shine and get a few subscribers by, you know, uh, uh, regenerating drama about us. Yeah, serious, man. Like, uh, at one point when I was looking at the Gambia, I was like, Man, look at all these hate this this collection of hate videos about you know about what people are doing in the game. It's like you have different people in different groups literally forging what we're talking about, a reconnection movement where you're there living, you're trying to you're moving around and you're showing different people what you're doing and things like that. And I'm not saying that um, you know that that some people weren't, you know what I'm saying, doing you know, crazy weird stuff that's, that messes things up for us. But, you know, it's a part of the game. You know, some of us have less experience than others and people make mistakes. And, you know, you're talking about a movement where you go somewhere you've never been before and you're trying to live. You know, and we as a people that, that are not living in different parts of Africa from the diaspora, we have to look at that as a blessing because you get to learn and you get to see how to make certain moves. So me personally, I'm not going to do any videos about anybody in the Gambia and how things are going for them and everything. What I would do, you know, when I'm getting there, you know, you shake people out and praise them and just salute them and said, keep the fight going on whatever you can do to, to support in general. You know, you give, you know, you give support and things like that, because once we get this thing really organized, brother, people are going to have an option to go to all of these incredible countries and they're going to be able to connect with real organizers that can help them. Like example, somebody's coming to the Gambia, they can connect with you and you got them. They're coming to Ghana. They can connect with me and I got them. Now, my brother, uh, uh, going ham, you know, you're trying to go to Sierra Leone. You connect with him. He got you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got my yeah. brother, Kyle Genesis. Uh, you know, you you want to connect with Liberia. You know, I connect with you. You know, you connect with him. He got you. That's, you know, that's yeah. you know, that's, a, that's several brothers right there alone. And, that, that, and I have a whole list of others in different countries. So all of us are, you know, one thing I noticed about all of us, we all get along. We don't have no beef with each other. And we all look out for each other. And that's power right there. When we really put our energy together, it's gonna be something special. So I noticed, you know, they got these, um, you know, they got these fake YouTubers out there with their funny, their funny uh, foreign accents and you know, funny European foreign accents, and they literally be on some other stuff. And literally, they see that, and you know, whoever is paying them or working with yeah. them or, or whoever is supporting them in their subscription and things like that, they don't want to see that happen. But it's like you're telling people, regardless of whatever you want to see happen or not, we're going to make this thing happen because it's too many of us. The energy is too strong. And we have right. learned from what our ancestors have been through. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I, you know, with all of these uh, uh, in YouTube, it, it's a mosquito. <laughs> well, you know, it's a positive thing in that it's really stopping a lot of people that already have a lot of self-doubt that's already negative coming from over here right. you know uh, 
And, you know, it, it, it forces us to do this because me and you supposed to have linked a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, Absolutely. you know, the <laughs> things that we, you know, been doing. And but it, it's a need now for us to be able to come together and create uh, associations and create, you know, uh, communication channels, you know, like uh, any idea that I bring to the table is really for everybody. You know what I mean? And I get a lot of hate, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, I'm an idea man and I can make things happen and people see that as a threat to their to their income. But we all can make money together. I've seen that devastate right. a lot of potential income potential here, you know, because, you know, I'm not somebody that was doing things at a small level. We were generating um, uh, close to six figures in investment and we had, you know, uh, over millions of dollars in pledges and things and we still have a lot of that stuff, you know, uh, despite the uh, last year, uh, Last year, the end of uh, the year prior to last, this is 21, uh, 20, in October, there was a big blow up here. And I like to call it the burden of Black Wall Street, the Gambia, because we had, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, 40 investors. We still have some of them, but there was a, one uh, one investor, you know, uh, particularly and another one came over clout uh, chasing clout seeking and they uh they, they made a lot of false allegations against uh, me and my uh, former business partner and it caused a lot a lot a lot of distraction and a lot of you know uh instability in the country it uh, brought shame to the movement and the, uh, the most shameful part about it it was other bloggers here on the ground that embraced them embraced them and you know uh took them in and supported that and it was all fun and games and laugh and giggles and we were in a whole nother person company uh, we're in a whole nother country. You understand what I'm saying? That's, you know, so uh, uh, as I said, this is the type of mindset that our community that has decimated our community in uh, the U.S. And, um, you know, so we have to be uh, vigilant and we have to create mediation councils when there are uh, problems. So I actually, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to get some people who are interested in, you know, uh, being on a committee. You know, you can send me your email at quasiboy at yahoo dot com. You know, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do something where everyone can be involved. We need to, you know, with the technology out, you can really create an app, and you can have ten, twenty thousand people, you know, oversight, voting on uh, vital um, uh, situations and matters. You know, uh, they have, you know, you got certain people out there that's not in the, even on the continent that uh, you know consider themselves somebody that's oversight. For the continent, somebody. Oh yeah, man! Isn't a joke, man? <clears throat> that's not like an FBI. That's not like an FBI movement right there. That's I'm saying, like you know, you know, CIA stuff. Nobody, no, no intelligent person. No intelligent person they, would, uh, they, they're know. gonna oversight and do stuff that it takes people like me and yourself to do, who are who have hands on the ground, have connections and networks, and have the skills in the background. It's all you talk. Know? It's all talk. You know, and, and it's like. <laughs> We want, we want our people who are, that are strong in business and you know you know and you know like what i'm seeing a lot of the profession you know i'm not going to put it out there for everybody but uh the sister mentioned here we should have a diverse community uh-oh hold on a second my screen now moved over hold on she said that we should have a diverse community of um you know uh, continental africans as well as you know, uh, you know, a diaspora, and in those situations, you know, with our community dynamic, dynamic, you know, it's the majority of them are Gambians. Before you know, uh, we try to incorporate more diasporans, but you know, we need a focused group of people and to come in and uh, uh, instructor teacher capacities, you know, and we build a community. Like I said, you know, we really have to have people there. There's going to be a lot of people out there that's they're going to try to take away or stop that just because they want to sell land, just because they want to sell you on something. They'll try to uh, stop a community uh, initiative. You know what I mean? Because they want to say, and we saw that here. A lot of people got sold into plots of land, you know, haphazardly, all spread out in the horrible areas instead of, you know, getting... You know, like you guys are doing 15 acres, 60 acres together. That way we can build uh, collectively and be a support to one another. Yeah, absolutely, brother. And 
uh, as you, you mentioned about the community that you have is primarily Gambian. What I want people to do is, you know, people always want to, they always want to create a little idea of utopia. You know, like our land example, it's a certain price of the land. I needed investors, you know, people who can actually just qualify to be a part of the community and people can come up with the money. And those group of folks, it's, you know, it's a project. It's not limiting anyone from the African continent or anyone from the diaspora. It's, you know, whoever come with the, you know, come with the, you know, the situation. Uh, mm -hmm. so, those, so it's been our folks from the African diaspora. Uh, do we have people from Ghana in the group? Absolutely. And things like that. But uh, it's what it is. So when we're there and we're building, you know, you have people marrying, you have people connecting, you have world going on. But what this community does, it, it's a transitional connection. That's the issue that people are having with repatriation. As we talk about some of the things that um, I wanted to share with uh, people getting ready to make a move and, and, and travel to Africa. You know, yeah. you have to look at the, the long term of it when people talk about planning and the logistics of it and the reality of it. Like people are thinking that they're going to somehow magically create business that they never created before. I have no knowledge of and they're just going to make it work there and they're going to just create this utopia where they're just going to live somewhere in the middle of the country mm -hmm. and don't know anyone and everything is just going to be all right. And then when, you know, but it's not this, that simple. We have lots of people that are there repatriation, repartnered, that are there living and doing business in Africa that have repatriated and they are not doing well. And they have not, you know, they have put themselves in a situation where they have limited themselves. So what you want to do, brother, is cooperative and economics. You want to you want to get a group of your brothers and sisters that you're close with. You want to put your money together. You want to get some land. You want to, you know, you want to build what you want to build together. You want to invest your money together. Yeah. You know, and things like that. And from there, if you need to connect with a, a group of any other of our people, like a group of um, Ghanaian business people there, now you had a situation where you want more from you know, the level playing field because you have something and leverage to work with. You're not just coming as as a lost foreigner or something. Uh, so right. it's very important that we really connect with our people there in the country and build a strong union. You know, you know, I'm not limiting us connecting with the rest of our folks on the African continent. I would never do that. But I'm telling people, but what people do, people tend to forget about, like you and I, you know, we, 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 li we live in Georgia. You know, you've lived in Georgia for a period of time. I lived here for a period of time. It does make sense to connect. You know, it's like, why does blow past that connection of me and you connected to do things in Africa and just feel like I'm just going to magically get to Ghana and just meet one or two people and it's going to work out like that. And the relationships I have in Ghana, it works good because these are, these are business people that I've worked with for a long time. You know, just like the relationship of the people that I do business with here in Georgia. And, and it becomes more of an organic connection to where we can really just solve our, our, our problems. But a lot of times I feel like we're out of focus and we're letting people tell us what to do and how to do certain things. And that's one problem that people have with me. I'm a person, you know, I'm strong at what I'm about. I get up every day and I put my work in. I don't beg or ask anybody for anything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't, like, none of my videos are even... Most of my videos, like 99% of them are not even monetized. I'm not even thinking about it. That's not my mindset. And the way we get right. money and do business is on straight up just, you know, doing administrative work, you know, tourism. You, the you, know, you, you know what I say? Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not knocking anybody hustle, but right. is it a pattern of, you know, people coming, getting YouTube channels, and they the first thing they want to do is get monetized so they can start making money. <laughs> Then they want to start asking for donations. Then they want to get a Patreon, join my Patreon, you know. And it's all about me, 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 me. It's all about me, 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 you know. And, you know, um, so that's the type of uh, individualistic capital mindset that we have coming over. Uh, the, the brother made a comment. I don't know if I should have been waiting. I see Joseph Bronze here. I'm going to pull you in in one second. But the brother said diaspora should have a district, and I think the sister was replying to this. Should have uh, should have uh, their own communities in Africa, and we we most definitely and most certainly should have our own community as a support, so we can be around people who share our same you know cultural background. It doesn't have to be exclusive to us, but we should have districts and places where we can go and we can experience uh, a quality of life that's similar 
in terms of the arts and food and things, you know, uh, and then even where our brothers and sisters can come and say, hey, we're going to Little New York or we're going to Little Jersey or we're going to Little Atlanta, you know, just like other foreign nationals do when they come over into America and these other countries, you know. So, you know, uh, but let's get Joseph Bronze and let's, jo I keep calling him Joseph, my cousin Joseph. <laughs> Um, absolutely, but let me just add to one thing that you said, and yeah. family importance. Uh, what my brothers mentioned, if, say, example, if one of us go to you know a, a country like Ghana or the Gambia and things get bad for you, you at least have people you can call and reach out to that will, will help you. Because the issue that you're going to run into is like you run into a situation where you, you don't have any help, and you got to run to the American embassy and just beg them for a ticket, and they'll just book you for a shelter and get you a ticket back to whatever state that you need to go to. You know, that's not what we want our people to go to, but those things do happen. So those are some also the important reasons why we need to build these communities. And like my brother mentioned it's not exclusive only to us. There's nothing that we're building that's exclusive only to the folks in the diaspora. You know? But the the time too, other people got to participate and bring their energy. Right, exactly. Oh, Jose. What's up, What's up, fam? Greetings, hey, hello. I'm uh I'm um uh, yeah thank you for uh, having me uh yeah I wanted I wanted just to yeah join in uh and 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 say that I'm 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 happy to see uh, you you two uh, speak with each other you know uh, you have you have to see you have you have uh, a similar the similar types types of attacks it's 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 unbelievable I had I had a similar <laughs> type of in, in 2016 people actually. Uh, uh, do things. It it looks like they 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 want to build in Africa, but but it it it's actually uh, uh, in the end it's only to set you up to fail because they can't see uh, progress. They 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 uh, they are reminded of of uh, of responsibility that we have uh, as a collective uh, as a collective worldwide, and that is to to rebuild uh, rebuild ourselves. And and uh, people people wanna wanna stay in that same circle uh, uh, of uh, comfort. And and uh, they 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 some of them even go go as far as to destroy your project on the continent, and that, that that's that's my uh, experience of or what I what I have uh, what I think I have experienced. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to say, I am uh, I I indeed uh, am a, a, a good worker. You know, I am not. Uh, um, I, I don't have this uh, this boss or this leadership uh, element in me, but I am super skilled, uh, 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 and I, I am looking forward to uh, be in contact with Mass Crazy because he is a business developer. A developer, you understand? So, so yeah. the, the many skills that I have. Uh, uh, I can I, I I'm I'm going to Senegal and uh, near nearby Gambia. And one of the first things that I'm going to do is uh, uh, visit Crazy and 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 to look what we what we can mean for each other, you know. And I yeah. I, I believe I believe I can contribute contribute something in in uh, in the in the space that Crazy already is in, and that is to train uh, locals. Uh, but but uh, of course I need to eat. Wait, you know what I'm saying? So, so I have a, I have a few uh, business uh, uh, ideas, and uh, 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 and I'm going to propose those. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm also um, uh, a member of a, of a collective, uh, the Ledge Group, and mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, uh, on my own, uh, uh, I, I feel I feel when I'm when I'm part of a collective, I feel that. Uh, uh, we are a collective for group, uh, group economics, but uh, uh, in my mind, group economics is to to make money and to put it in the group, so not to be dependent of the group. So, so uh, 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 I'm, I'm I had, as I said, I have a few, I have a few uh, approaches. I'm going to uh, lay it on the table with Crazy, and, yep. and then I'm going to uh, to to we get actually. A a valuable yeah. member for for the ledge group that's that's we, we that's, spoke um, about that in the past we talked about you know group economics you know i have um you know go ham lifestyle I, I, i'm gonna do more so we can come on and we're gonna uh speak more mr bronze yeah uh, however we need to be able to it can't just be a movement of people it has to be a move it's an economic movement and we can't have 
you know, of billions and billions of dollars moving here through the year of return, century of return, and it's going right back into the hands or going into the hands of, uh, you know, those who are outside of our community. You know, um, let me go ahead and add a brother on. Brother, how, how are you, brother? You there? I am well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, brother. You and Sarah What's up, Leon? Money? Yes, greetings go ham. Greetings That's right. Like I was in power. I just figured, like, man, let me join these two brothers. Because we, we, <laughs> you're right, oh, we, we definitely <laughs> need to uh, be hooking up. And you know, we've always tried. I've always tried to hook up with Quasi once. But mommy, but money turned me on to him. <laughs> but uh, I didn't get a chance. But yeah, I mean, we, you got to look at it, guys. <clears throat> Our ancestors, when they tried to make the move out of America, we all know. They had all kind of problems, right? We had agents. We had uh, folks that they sent in to just uh, steer the movement into the ground, and that's pretty much what they did. That's why here we are, you know, pretty much all these years later still trying to repatriate to the African continent. So if people thought that you were just going to make this move and build empires and, 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 and legacy and, and dynasties in Africa again, Y'all yeah, better think again. You you definitely gonna get some cuts, some bruises, some abrasions, <laughs> but just gotta power through. We've seen this before. We've seen this movie before, right? We just gotta power through, get it done, take the bumps, take the bruises, take the arrows, and in the end, actually get it done. That's what I wanted to add. Yes, but I'm with you on that, man. We gotta keep it strong, just like that. Thank you for your contribution, brother. Um. Like me coming to the continent, when I left my hometown of Connecticut 20 years ago, I pretty much changed my life around. I did a 180 from where I was. You know, I moved to Atlanta, I got married. I was able to start a, a business. I was very lucrative. So we were able to travel all my children homeschool. One of my daughter played classical pianos. But that's not the background I come from. However, being in Atlanta, for a while, we had the illusion of prosperity in that we were making a lot of money in Atlanta, but you can't really have ownership because you can't own the land. You know, so Africa provided or presents an opportunity where we can take those resources and build communities because we have to have places where we can establish our own our own rules and our own laws. You know, we have to have, we have to reject and, and the, every system we live in a time where we're going to see the end to all the, the world systems the, the financial system the governing system you know the religious system political systems you know so a sustainable communities are you know popping up and these are places what i you know like i said I, I, we need to build no art community we need to build communities that's off-grid communities and that's self-sustaining especially when we, we're looking at the, the, the elite and their agenda and the global lockdown. You know, before I left, I tell people all the time, before I left the U.S., I was scared to death that, you know, FEMA agents were going to come or, or government agents were going to come and get me. I was like, oh, they know I'm leaving. They know I got this damn ticket in their system. They know I'm going to Africa to build and they're going to come get me. Why did I have that fear? I shouldn't have that fear. You understand what I'm saying? That's like you on a plantation and you made a plan to get up out of there, but you know you told one too many people and you like, oh, I'm going to be escaping tonight. I know master, he's probably out there waiting to cut my damn foot off. You know, and, uh, you know, this movement is, is so serious, man. And then you have, like, all of these clowns that are coming. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but, uh, you know, like I said, I came over here. I came. I, I didn't need anybody. I didn't need anybody help. I live great. You know, I have a great life. You know, Alexis, she was like, uh, let, let me just throw up what Alexis said. Uh, the dynamic duo you had, Quasi, with your pre previous business partner, Art Kathy, you know, had her convinced to move. And like I said, you know, you can't fake genuineness. You know, I'm not knocking anybody what you're doing, but you got to listen to what a person is saying out their mouth. What are you doing? You understand what I'm saying? Are you just trying to sell me land? Hey, come over and buy land, buy land here, buy land there. Or are you saying, hey, let's come over and buy land together. 
Let's get a banker. Let's get a counter. Let's get a land developer so that we can we can do a multi million dollar budget with a, a, a multi million dollar project with 25 percent or 30 percent down. So the houses can actually be built. You know what I mean? Coming over here, pay as you go. It's never going to happen for a lot of the people that's buying houses in these areas. So you're going to see places that, that 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 are spotted with houses, and then the property next door was somebody that just want had a dream, and they send over a thousand dollars, but that's stagnating the whole community. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to buy, uh, uh, uh you know, land together as a group. We need to come together and uh, create a platform where we can. Uh, collaborate and put all of our ideas on the table as uh, as leaders and brothers and, and and create intervention but we definitely the movement like i said went underground a lot of people are coming but they don't even want to let nobody know they're here because they don't want to appear on somebody youtube channel and that's gossiping and making up stuff about them and, and they can't even get their brand right you understand what i'm saying and we can't allow that to take place man as brothers you know what I'm saying? We have to be able to, you know, come together and make public statement. I always represent for the Exodus Alliance because when I have my drama going on, going on, they were the only ones. It, everybody that that had the decency to come out and say, "Hey, listen, we're somewhere else now. We're in a whole nother country. You got people coming from South Atlanta and and and, and, and Chicago, and you know, people coming straight out of these hood environments coming over." getting on YouTube in front of certain people shouldn't even have YouTube channels. When, when we see it, we supposed to put everything in place to get that person off of that YouTube channel. You understand what I'm saying? If they're out there causing havoc and wreaking havoc, or let it be known, hey, we don't approve of this message. Yeah, I, 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 I love their uh, initiative. It, it was uh, it was it, it was showing care for the collective. Uh, uh, I, I, maybe they they handled it uh, uh, somewhat soft, uh, somewhat uh, like they say here. Uh, they they didn't address the. I'm sorry, wretched, wretchedness. But I liked uh, that they uh, that they um, uh, took charge or they they approached. Um, yeah, they they wanted to fix the the, the situation. I love that. Again, they want to mediate. And you yeah, know, mediate exactly. I like that. That's that's that that was a display of uh, true Pan Africanism. You know, like I said, you know, at the end of the day, I think now that we all realize that the movement is not going to be a walk in the park, and that we really have to do things in a way that will secure and guarantee that. We do not have any dictators, tyrants, individuals that are looking to hijack the movement, pimp the movement, rape it, you know, in the name of Pan-Africanism. You know, and I, I ask you people just to look and see what brothers are doing. And if you don't have anything positive to say, don't say anything. I know a lot of these people mm -hmm. out here that's behind this nonsense got multiple accounts and they'll be up on a live sending messages to themselves and all of this type of covert you know, sending emails, sending messages, calling around, you know, you know, we need to really focus on economic development in a focused way. You know, uh, Bomani, I would like to talk to you more about that. You know, uh, you know, anybody, what we want to do is create a platform where people can sign up and uh, present ideas, you know, present ideas, proposals, uh, grievances, and we were able to funnel that and we have a community of professional people in every endeavor, lawyers, you know, business developers, you know, uh, community planners, right? And, and we are able to take, this is what I did and the idea that I had and that I started to implement. You know, uh, you know, if someone came through our network and wanted to do something, you know, I would create the proposal and then I would put it in the group and put it so it could, uh, uh, people can look at it and say, okay, you know, you need to add this or you need to take it away. You know, a totally transparent system. And, and that's what we're working towards to create a, 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 a connection and a communication uh, with brothers that's in the movement in different countries. Powerful, brother. And that's what it's about, man. Organizing your network and building that straight uh, Black Power economics. Because, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have so, um, those are some of the things that uh, we're yeah, working on. We're working on, and it's good to see others working on the same thing. And like I'm mentioning to everybody, um, we're coming together more, more, you know, more as time go along. Uh, but it's not one of those things where people just organically just connect because of the so much of you know, the, the, so much of the the divide tactics and the you know, divide and conquer tactics that's been deployed uh, that still goes on. And you know, now our people pick it up to just be those um, distractors. So uh, yeah. we just got to double up and step our game up. And you know, uh, yeah. have people calling me, asking me questions about about people doing this and that. I'm telling them, I'm like, you know, family, I can't stop people from the craziness that they want to. You know, maybe maybe I'm maybe people are obsessed with me and they I make a great story. Maybe they like entertainment. You know, I, I dabble yeah. off in a little bit of entertainment every once in a while. But I, like right now in this month of February, we just getting straight up back to focus on business and everything. Well, uh, you know what it is. Somebody. What it is. What, what, it, what, what we're seeing, Mike. Michael, we're gonna bring you in one second. But what we're seeing is, you know, what these YouTubers, right? What they do is, in order to build their subscribership, they have to create content. So they have to talk about, you know, uh, gossip. So what they do is, you know, they go around and they, 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 they create gossip to create subscribership, but that, that has nothing to do with Pan-Africanism. Michael, how you doing, brother? Where you from? I'm from Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Michael. Can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing, sir? What you got? Hello, brother. I just want to tell y'all, man, that Quasi Boy is a f Hey, you, you see that guy? That just came on. I used to work with him. <laughs> Marcus Guyton. It, it, it's a guy I started working with years ago. All right. And he was one of those haters. And he's not doing nothing. So I heard his voice when he came up there. That's why. I, let me just ban him from the studio. So. Wow, like people that's not that, uh, stupid. They think you're just going to let them do whatever and then just let them go on with it. But, but never you know, that. that, that's what I'm saying to people. Brother, the brother, he he's not even here. He had he was doing this before me. He never even made it here. So you know, we got all of these weak-minded mama boys, and you know <laughs> that want to come up here and they want to attach yourself. Like they trying to drag me into drama. Leave me alone, man. Y'all go ahead with that. I'm over here doing my thing, man. Our people are so toxic and disgraceful. <laughs> and you know, it's unfortunate that we have to get up here and use our platform when we should be talking about building community. But we understand where we come from. So now, you know, uh, as I said, you know, uh, with people coming over, you know, we have to do things in a structured way. But we must focus on the youth population, mostly the youth population here and youth population from the states, young people coming. Most of the uh, older people that are coming, we need to produce something for them, too, as far as retirement villages and communities and where they can come. You understand what I'm saying? But these these people that's coming over for the party life and things like that, you know, uh, we have to be very careful because, you know, they're going to affect what we're doing. The demographics, the demographic is interesting. It, it uh, I think I think repets are, are uh, let, let's say, uh, 40 and above uh, um, uh, and and. Um, and that's that's maybe that's that's a, that's a problem. Our youngsters in the diaspora are not interested, I'm afraid. And mm -hmm. uh, and 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 uh, um, uh, me personally, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I am I have service in mind. I want to uh, uh, serve uh, local young uh, local young folks. I I have seen I have seen some issues, some problems. Uh, uh, and and that's uh, that's maybe maybe that's our fault, you know. I'm I'm an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. I'm a, I'm a second generation immigrant. I live uh, for 50 years in the, in the Netherlands. I'm, I'm 52. I'm 52. So please don't uh, don't start this uh, this FBA. Uh, uh, you you fled you fled your you fled your country. Uh, uh, so please don't 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 start that. Uh, uh, but but um, uh, uh, in the, uh, um, in 2012, I saw something. And and that was uh, that was counterproductive, uh, and uh, uh, if I may, I'm, uh, I, I, ex I I explain it uh, uh, real quick. 
uh, there was there was sort of a revolution, and and uh, and I think it 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 was the propaganda that the West was uh, was directing to the to the North Africans because uh, uh, it looked like uh, um, the the, Ara the Arabian Spring spilled over to to Senegal, and uh, and uh, Wade. An old man, and that was in those days. Uh, in those days, the propaganda was about old men, old uh, dictators in Africa, blah 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 blah. And 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 it turned out that it was targeted to uh, a North African uh, uh, population, and it and it, and it became uh, later on. It became the the Arabian Spring. But but in those days, the, uh, it was that. And and Wada, the president of uh, of uh, Senegal, was an old man. And uh, uh, he was he was in his in his uh, second uh, term, and uh, uh, the terms in Senegal are seven years, I believe. So that's quite long. And um, and uh, uh, the youngsters were complaining. Uh, uh, he he, uh, but 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 there were, there was something beautiful going on in his mind. Uh, Runoko Rashidi, uh, he he had um, uh, he was present at a at a lecture for, uh, from Runoko Rashidi, and Runoko Rashidi woke 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 this man up. He, uh, it, it was a typical, you know, typical quote unquote uh, a believer in IMF and uh, and World Bank and uh, the West has the solution with his uh, French wife, but 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 this this um, this lecture from Renoko Rashidi woke him up and he uh, realized that that he, that he should work for his for his people and with his people, so so uh, 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 he built this 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 image, you know, I I call it our. Statue of Liberty, you know, you got in the United States, you got this single mama, excuse me, uh, and uh, and and this this statue in uh, in Senegal um, uh, uh, is is a complete family with with the the child pointing right. at the direction, uh, and that's and that's a beautiful that's symbol. The, that's, the, that's, the, that's the that's the that's the matriarch uh, uh, world control system, you know what I mean? The matriarch control system that we see. And that uh, I, I think many people uh, fail to address, you know, uh, but, hey, hey, brother, you in Sierra Leone now? Right. No, you I'm right outside of St. Louis. I've been back about three weeks now. You've been back three weeks now. Uh, uh, Bomani, let me ask you a question. Welcome back to the States. I, 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 wish, I wish we could say that, but okay. <laughs> Appreciate you. That. Know, you know, when I went back to the States, I mean, we're living in a very serious time, man. And if you out there and you had a problem with somebody five, six, seven years ago, move on with your life, man. You don't be following. <laughs> you know, it's people that come into your life and try to screw your life up, right? But let them tell it it was you trying to screw them life up their life up and then you find them come around six seven eight years later you not interjecting i i'm doing my thing what do you got mind your damn business and go your own way you understand what I'm the, saying? yeah you here's what? the thing here's the thing though when you when 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 you run into haters 10 20 years can go by that person still going to feel the same way about you. So the only thing you can do is put distance between you and them and, and mm -hmm. keep moving with your life because they are never if they don't like you when you first meet them or or during the course of uh, you knowing them, they'll never like you. you just got to move on with your life and put some distance in between you and them. Hey, I want you brothers to send me your email. I'm going to put my email here. Anybody here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how he can work together in a way that will allow us to communicate and participate as a community. I have a program that I put together where we can we can come together and we can create solutions for brothers that need, somebody might say, hey, there's a brother being attacked. You know what I mean? Let's make a public statement or let's do some research and see, let's contact the people that's involved, like the Exodus Alliance that shouldn't stop. We need to get the excellence aligned and have that together. We have to together not allow the garbage from the U.S. to come over here. We can't allow it to come over here. It's not gonna. It, it's not going well. You know, there's people over here with YouTube channels that's going hard because they have the wrong agenda. 
and they're getting a lot of people because the real workers don't have time to be on goddamn YouTube all damn day. Serious. Serious. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? We don't have time. time to be up here all day. You see, we be getting up here trying to get our shit together. We like that. We just finished the whole day talking to a, a gang of people doing business plan, building website, doing databases, taking payments, making moves. You know, we don't have time to be on YouTube, you know, hugging on to, you know, uh, uh, seeing who about to expose us. Or, you know, you out there in a desperate attempt to look like you're somebody that's a real parent African to be one and you not. You ain't doing the work. You don't have the language. You're only fooling the fool that's only coming over here that want to uh, duplicate your YouTube model and get some subscribers and get some patron. YouTube ain't paying like that unless you're monetizing that into some real estate sales. You want to say that? Says, brother. Says, brother. You know? And you got you got you got fake journalists, man. You got people who think they BBC. <laughs> right, right. You know, but you know, like I said, at the end of the day, if you can come up here and get a whole bunch of people to to, to follow behind you and get you to send some money, and uh, you know, do your thing. And all they're doing is getting all the, the weak-minded people before they get over here and get your network and corrupt it. Yeah, I mean, come on, what kind of weak-minded person will use oversight? <laughs> You know, so, you know, we, you know, everybody that's, you know, been in the network, like I said, you know, uh, you, you know, we have to create some safeties. You know, most of my enemies was, was in my house with me because I embraced them when they came over here. And I thought we can work together in an open manner as a community. But I've learned. I learned the hard way. You know what I mean? You know, the people that are coming over here, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> We have to be very careful and selective of how we're moving, and we need to move together as an economic group. Yes, yeah, serious, man. So, I mean, I heard you earlier. Um, you literally were saying that you, you wish you didn't help all those folks because they literally end up turning on you, which is a sad situation because we need people to help people. But it's like, if you're going to turn on me, I might as well not even waste my time. You, you know, this is what happened, right? Now, you, I've been over here for a long time, and if, if you go back and anybody look at my videos, I've always had a lot of people working for me, all right? Some of my training videos, you'll see at least, and I made sure everybody saw a lot of people in there. See what I'm doing? I'm training. I, you see me there with 10, 20 people, right? Now, when, when, uh, when you had these new people come over here, they came around, they saw the same thing, but now they're from the West and they're seeing the brothers and sisters here and they're taking them as people that's gullible or they're slow, but they're not slow. So when they came over here and they started the chaos, you know, uh, my people, I said, you know what, since all of this is going on, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go ahead with them? Now, what do you, you know, now you come over here, you don't know nobody, it's two of you. You got all this chaos started. Now, somebody that's well-respected over here, that's married, I always tell people I have multiple wives here. You know, I have a huge family. You know, I got people all out there in business everywhere. I'm well-respected here. You come in here, you don't, you don't know what's going on, and you run in your mouth. So when, when they went out there, the people from the UK took advantage of them first. <laughs> and then the people... That that was that encouraged them for their bad behavior because they wanted market share. So they said, Let, let's use these dummies over here trying to get a YouTube check, but they don't understand YouTube not paying like that. All they're thinking is, hey, they're gonna get a quick check every month, even if it's full five hundred. They can live off of that. They're ready to sell the whole uh, Pan African movement out before we return the history to turn. Ready to you know, Kimmy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, they're ready to stitch on the whole everybody, huh? Mom, dad, <laughs> yeah, brother. I mean, it's serious, man. And these are people that you literally help. Like, I'm telling people that the people we're talking about you know, uh, that do certain things to us are not strangers. These are the people that, like, in my situation, that will literally travel on a tour with you, and you literally took care of everything for them connect you with the, your, their whole world of people that you have, get them all the legal stuff that they need. And it's like, turn around and just bite the hand that connect with them and look out for them. And that's a major problem that uh, you know we're having. So now it's like, you gotta start watching people and kind of being careful of who you're looking to deal with. So even this year now, I'm like, 
every single person that's looking to travel to do certain things with me, I gotta like really scope them out harder because all it takes is one person to destroy your old, you know, your old empire. This is especially it, with us as men, uh, especially yeah. us as black men. It's it's just <laughs> gossip and, it, and, and, and you're done. Yep, there you go, gossip and you're done. So you know, you know, uh, like I said, even even coming over here, you know, my position is just. It, it, it's divine, and I can't even tell you, all, you know, the restrictions that we have in the U.S., right? I always like to take it back to Roots, and if you remember in Roots, you know, uh, Kunta Kinte, his, his childhood sweetheart, what was her name? I thought it was Maggie or something like that, but his childhood sweetheart, they snatched him up together, and then... When they uh, got it was uh, K Kizzy, wasn't it? Kizzy, Kizzy, okay. So Kizzy, right? When she got older, now she's been raped so many times physically. When Kunta was ready and they was in a position to get away, he was like, he went to pick her up because they brought her to another plantation. So he went to get her. And he was like, hey, come on, let's get up out of here. You know, we can be free. And she was like, hey, I'm not going nowhere. This is all I know. I'm not going nowhere. So much so to a point where she alerted the authorities. They heard her in there arguing with Kunta Kente in the shed, and he had to run out. You know, so that's what happens when you have these people coming over, and it's like, you know, they creating all this drama and caught all of this chaos and all of this confusion. They're coming over here, they're crying wolf, right? About situations, one person. These people need to be held accountable. You know, if they want to hold us accountable, we need to come together and put everything behind us in this movement. I, 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 this brother made a video during that time while that garbage was going on last year. And he was like, oh, you know, with Brother Quasi, a brother from the UK, they have a small file on him and his wife. But he was saying, you know, the movement is just, you know, it's such a great movement, man. And he, 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 this brother is doing X, Y, Z to undermine the movement. Don't even know me. Don't even know me. Don't even know. The, but they, they got on the side of these distractors and these people over here who were looking to you know, uh, undermine my business so they can they can get our revenues that was coming. You know, uh, we we had the shit going on, and everybody saw that. They didn't they didn't see the numbers. You know what I mean? But they knew we had it going on. We was funding people. We had a lot of investors. They started putting our business out there. Oh, they took in over eighty, ninety thousand dollars investment. Yeah, because we had it popping. You want to stay on the running? The fire was running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People saw what we was doing, and I never in my life thought that black people would come together and put their money up and make that move like that. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, Akon really said, if you come over here, you could build a Fortune 500 business within five years. It's true. True. Until, yeah, you did say that. Until, until you get the, you know, uh, the black populace over here. And, and uh, you know, uh, I don't want to go into that idea too much, but. You know, like I said, it, it's really a great thing, man. You know, this year we would have been, oh, my God, so many people would have had wealth this year. And, you know, the, we didn't have to burn that down. But like I said, it's YouTubers and these people we have to hold accountable. But if you look out there and look at these people, they're going for self. They got their own projects going on. They, You know, they're saying, hey, send me some money so I can build my house up. You know, we got this land. We're going to build this up. You know what I mean? How about how about the next man house? How about this man house? You understand what I'm saying? Why we put a plan together and get the land and say, come out here. We're going to, you know, all we're going to need is the materials, but we're going to give the labor ourselves. We need our people that are contractors, that are carpenters, that are electricians, that are plumbers, you know, come and volunteer your time on this land. Nobody, why nobody said, let's do an AFRI mark. Let's get a big warehouse where we can bring in everything that we use. But instead, we're running up the Caraba Avenue and running down to, you know, uh, these, these shops and getting secondhand garbage that's breaking down, you know, the three, four weeks after you buy it. And we're supposed to be the most intelligent black nation on, on this planet. You know what I mean? We are. Some of us, not all of us, but the ones that are. Now it's time to put those real systems in place that we're talking about so that we can operate in a way... We can't be affected by the rest of the brothers and sisters coming over, you know, uh, with, with the buffoonery. 
Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be no stopping the buffoonery because I mean they all uh, it's like a sinking, it's like a sinking ship. Everybody want to jump off the ship and they want to go somewhere. So when they start looking at other places, you know where they can go, they they run into our videos and then next thing you know they get the bright idea. I want to go to Africa, but now they're not paying African. That's the difference. You, they just want to get off the sink. They just want to get off a sinking ship, and mm -hmm. so they see what we're doing. It looks, it looks uh, 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 adventurous. You know, they they want it. They want to. They want to adventure. But then once they realize, okay, I can go to Africa, and they seeing what we're doing, and they just, I think it's just one of those things where they're not used to seeing black men in in positions of power. Right. Because really, bro. we are. That, we are, that, really we are the face. We are the face of the repatriation movement. Back to Africa, black men are the face of that. You you know, um, brothers and, and the people that's out there, let's stop this drama. Let's stop this craziness. Let's work together through uh, channels. Things have been mentioned about you know, like I said, I put my email there. You know, send over if you. We want people to send emails that don't say your name, Quasi Boyd at Yahoo. Because we want to do it in a way where we, uh, we basically we want to do it in a way where we're protecting everybody. We're just starting out, but you know, you know, you take one person to get in there, and then you got people that they want to destroy the movement. You know, they're they're, they're like uh, uh, ticks. They're like they like politics. You know, I tell people, do you know what politics is? Poly means more than one. A tick. Yep. Blood sucker of the poor. Okay, so they're telling you, you got in, in, in these governments, all of these politicians, they're they're a bunch of blood suckers, and that's their name, like Negro PN. You understand what I'm saying? But we accept this as leadership instead of creating our own leadership uh, model. You know, and you know we have enough technology today. And what I want to uh, contribute to is a, a you know a tech a, a software or a platform where we can uh, have a community a community uh, oversight a community a committee and and be able to and somebody say hey you know uh, this brother being attacked because I know a lot of things that I would do now that you know I didn't know last year that could have stopped a lot of things and I want to make sure that's available to the next brother before. They destroy, you know, uh, because, you know, if you get one person to sign on to a community uh, initiative, you know, you probably had to go through 100 people. You understand True. what I'm saying? So we got 40 people. That means we have to engage 4,000 people. This is hard work. Many talk, many nights of conversations. You know, people don't be scared of these cowards that's out there, that's bullying the movement. You know what I mean? And make you go up. You, you know, like I, like when I, when I had a problem with my, my, my accusers right out of this house, I said, I don't give a damn what you're going to do. You want to go up there to YouTube? You're going to do it anyway. Get the hell out of here. You ain't going to come and intimidate. You want me to listen to you now? Are you kidding me? I'll be broke and want to take my own life if I have to live like you. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. You know, brothers, you know, sisters, we don't have... Man, we are here to protect you. This is these are real men you looking at. You are not these cowards out there that's just thinking about you know building their house and doing things for themselves. They got a little shot. We trying to come together economically and bring you know uh, bring some peace of mind to people that are coming over here that think this is still a jungle. I just talked to one of my friends. I talked to one of my friends. He's like, yo, Quasi, he's like, it's safe over there. They got cars over here. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, I'm riding donkeys and shit. I was like, bro, please. And he's like, yo, they got, he's like, yo, is it soldiers and stuff over there? I mean, I like, nigga, this ain't Hotel Rwanda. You know what I mean? Blood diamonds. I like, you got this or that. But, you know, bro, you from, you from uptown New York, Brooklyn, and, you know, where we, you know, all of these dangerous areas and we don't even we we scared to come to Africa because we just don't know. But I'm telling you, get your pack your bags, get your stuff together, come over and you know go listen, go to whoever you identify with. Okay? Whoever you identify with, go with them 
but don't hate on nobody else. You know, no. when people came over, when people came over, right? They were scared into the wrong hands. And then when they got around in, in those crowds, they was like, oh my God. You know, and you know, you have to choose the right crowd, you know, and, and I think when people see us, they they you know, uh, like I said, they're, they're, they'll be able to make an intelligent decision. But seriously, uh, brother uh, Quasi, uh, you made a great point. It's, you mentioned people from some of these rough, tough hoods, and then you yeah. go to Africa. <laughs> now, that's what that told me off. So even so, I even tell people, you know, whether you're from the, uh, whether, you know, we all see a situation, they can reach out to any of us. You know, they can reach out, and you know, we can get a tour to the actual country where you're around other people and you're you're protected and you got security and everything. So, you know, so you have that option if you, you know, and then you can just be guided into it. And then after a while, you'll feel free and feel normal. Next thing you know, you're catching plane flights on your own and you're doing your thing. And you know, hey, so I can attest to that. <laughs> you know what? That's Check how I started out. out. That's what they say. You should go and visit the country that you're thinking at least three times and that's make some it. connections. You got to make some connections. And that's what this is about. And then you can see for yourself. Because I don't really go by what I see on YouTube. I don't. Oh, you can. I'm on there. I tell people what I'm, what my experiences are. I show them the videos that I put together. It's kind of hard to fake all that. You know what I mean? And then I started out going on tours with Bo Money. So, and we, we do it to this day. When I go to Atlanta, <laughs> first person I call, man, come get me, man. Come get me. <laughs> you know? But that's what wow. you're supposed to You're supposed to make an alliance online and take it offline. Exactly. So for guys, so for well, we, like Crazy was saying earlier, for folks who just coming to get their YouTube on, they not looking to really take stuff offline. They really looking just to stay in that YouTube space. And when they realize that the bag ain't really there for beginners, then that's when they go into these, that, that trick bag. And that's what we're trying to prevent people from going into. You, you recognize them by the by the helping. It's the yep. arrogant. I'm from the West, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to help. You need to eat. I was in a highly... When our people come over, you know, the people here are reserved. You understand what I'm saying? And we can't just say, hey, you know, these people are slow. You know, they don't get it, this and that, you know, and you know, first of all, you got to respect, you know, other human beings. I remember as a young boy, they was just telling me, yo, you know, Quasi, you know, we respect you because you always respect us. And that's what got me where I am today, you know, by having respect. The, we need some mental health intervention. I don't know, that needs to be incorporated with this movement at a high level. You understand what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, this level of arrogance somebody put here that's coming over here is upsetting and spoiling and bringing instability in, uh, to these African nations. And we have to be ready to take decisive action. You know, understand what I mean? Like a lot of these people out here that's causing these problems, you know, they couldn't even come out into my, my where I'm from. They wouldn't even be able to come around that area. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, we can't let them come and bully the greatest happening in our history, in our lifetime. We can't let them come and be bullies and put us in reactive position. We got to have a proactive uh, stance and position against, uh, you know, distractors, the people that are some of the underlying movement. Yeah, I agree. I agree because we definitely going to get it. They're not, they not going to just let us... Uh, Build up empires in Africa and, and 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 not test us. That's just that ain't that ain't how it go, you know. And you got to realize that we 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 kind of we in the public eye, whether you want to be or not. And the fact is, everybody has um, access to that. So everybody is seeing what we're doing. They're hearing what we're doing, right? And you know that's going to upset a lot of folks. We're we're upsetting a lot of folks in, in this movement. So we're going to get some pushback. I'm just saying we just got to be prepared for that. You know what? You know, it's like I tell everybody, you know, you, you can't go out to a, a, a field 
and expect corn just to just pop out the ground like Jack and the Beanstalk. You know, you're gonna sure. have to get overalls on. You're gonna have to, you know, get your shovel. You're gonna have to get prepared to get dirty, to break yep. ground, hard ground. It's tough and dry and hard out here, but it's fertile. Then you have to get that water. You might have to drill down 10, 20, 30 feet to get the water. That's a death sentence for a lot of people. If you don't, yeah. have, the, you don't have the resources. You know, however, when you do that and you put that work in, then you yield a, a beautiful crop. And that's the that's the challenge that we have. You know, we you know, like I said, what the 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 uh what came the the uh the opposite of what came, the 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 like cause and effect. So being that I was at such a high level in the movement, then you you know, of course, all of us that's at a high level, we got a lot of people looking at us. So when there's drama on our behalf, it's not something that's local. It's international. I have friends back in my hometown saying, hey, we saw some drama about you. <laughs> you know I mean? And I'm like, yeah, you know, shit, you know, you know, I, I'm international. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're right. You know, you're right. You know, you're right. <laughs> we don't have a choice. The, the true pan-African soldiers that reincarnates that are here, we don't have a choice. We're on a mission and nothing will stop that. What we have done so far has created history, despite yeah. all of these people coming over here to make this a freak nick. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the freak, that's the freak nick. <laughs> Yo, they got a freak nick in over here, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Because at one point, you know, we were talking about black power nation building in Africa, and now it's a uh, popularity situation. But nevertheless, yeah. uh, you know, we as a people got to you know keep on um, encouraging people to come explore and invest money on some land, invest money with a community, a group of folks on the diaspora, uh, people that you know you you can connect with, and just you know take it from there. Not telling anyone that they shouldn't. You know, do this in whatever country, you know, but at the same time, too, always family. Don't forget your folks on the diaspora. Don't move to Africa and act all brand new. Like, you know, like I've heard stories, you know, folk saying that I didn't come over here to, you know, to, to, to live or be around no African Americans and things like that. And it's just like insults and comments. It's like, you know, you know, we're all your people, whether, you know, you're from the Caribbean, America, or, the, you know, or the African continent. But trying to get our people to, I know, it's like, the beatdown of the divide and conquer is serious, man, because but the good thing about it is, you know, we don't need everybody. You know, we get a good momentum of 1% of our folks. We can change the dynamics of things because that's when people tend to follow when you have something that you're really doing and you're just changing the scope of things, especially if you can offer them a job or offer them an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know, we're going to we're going to um, link in like uh, I see you, Neil. Neil's a good brother. You know, the sad thing is that when when people come over, I have to say, I can say, hey, you know, everything is good. So I got to be like, don't go here, don't go there, this and this. And, and, and that's not cool. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. But, like, me, at the, I, me, I am a, I'm a hustler. I've ever, I've always been a hustler. I've been someone that, like, you know, I was to be a part of uh, the economy, economic movement. You understand what I'm saying? Making things make happen and things like that. You know, so that just because that's my talent, it doesn't belong to me. I benefit all day. I don't need nobody. I'm good. I, trust me. Trust me. I'm good. I'm living very well. All right? And but I can't get be where I am if I don't have people that know that I care about them and I need them. You understand what I'm saying? I need, mm -hmm. you know, I, I need y'all for me to get to the next level. I mean, I could take this money and buy my house right now for 40, 50, 60, 70,000, but if I develop and train some people over the next, you know, three or four years, then I, we can build 20 houses. There you go. That's, That's why black like, power economics, brother. I listen. I had land. I, I had land before everybody came over here. I was the first one to get into that land. Garbage. 
You know, we were selling land. I was I was over here chilling. I was involved with the, 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 the top blogger at the time. And then I went to somebody that went harder than her. So, you know, we sold a lot of land, but the way that it was done, it, it was being done in a uh, haphazard way. But we can't buy land because we've been through the housing bubble in the States where you have people that have properties and there was a, a income disparity. Some could afford it and some can't. Now, how are we going to come to Africa and do the same thing? Everybody buy a bunch of land in the area and nobody's been vetted. There's no homeless owner association or development plan. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to build a house and be right next to a dump. They're going to bring them donkey carts and drop off some trash in the, in the lot next to your, your house that you built. You know, to the left, right, and behind it. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I look at these videos of people be doing these lives. It'd be uh, two or three hours. I'm like, how the hell do they stay on this live for that long? Do, do they have a life? But wow, we go on an hour and 40 minutes. And it, it's, it feels good to be able to see you brothers up here, man. Y'all handsome mm -hmm. brothers, man. i like to you know, congratulate y'all and you know, praise you all for your journey you know, uh, through the pit of hell in the Western <laughs> world. And exactly. Hell education, the pit of hell of a Western uh, uh, philosophy, you know, the pit of hell of Western uh, 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 religious systems. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because you think you're going to be able to get out of the, like they said, the illusion, you're going to be able to get out of uh, the hell of North America unscathed. The, the, <laughs> the brainwashing stopped working. You stop drinking the Kool Aid, and then you want to go back to Africa and think that it's going to be all gravy? Nah, 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 nah. You got to go through the fire even as you repatriate because it's going to be a lot of people, like I said, a lot of folks are just looking to get off this sinking ship. So they're not paying Africans. They, they keep up a lot of confusion. They just want to get out of America. And they see, they, when, they, when, they, when they go to Google or they go to YouTube and they type it in, you know, other countries they could go to, all our videos pop up. So this is where the ideas are coming from. And so they're like, man, I see this brother doing it. But see, the thing is, they was toxic in the neighborhood that they coming from. You see? And they're taking it to Africa, and that's what we what we experience. And so I'm thinking what's going to end up happening is we're just going to have to keep just motoring through, and we're just going to have, like you said before, we're just going to have to filter through 100 just to get one good person. Seriously. You know? I, I think, you know, I really, I really think you know, um, there, there, there are a, a lot of good people here and um, I, I know it's going to work, but we need those institutions. We need those systems. We need to be able to funnel, funnel them. Bomani is someone that's going to uh, assist us with that. We need to do collabor collaboratives. We need to work together and at least hold hands so that we, if someone come here or they go to Sierra Leone or they go to, you know, Ghana. You know, I was in Ghana. I was in Ghana a few months ago. I'm going to come down there and check you out. Well, I, I, I'm going to see you sooner. Then you're gonna expect it, all right? I, I don't. I don't tell people my motion and shit. Like, oh, <laughs> well, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, yeah. They're like, oh, he's secretly meeting Meg. This, you know, this one YouTuber. I think they're working with a voiceover, and it's just, uh, you know, like I said, I don't spend my time on that. And we really gotta focus more on bringing peace, unity here to the continent. So uh, I think uh, we we can conclude this, and maybe we can do this again. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. let's do it again. Yeah, yeah, maybe, you know what? It's, it's maybe we can get to the content, like-minded people. Yeah, maybe All maybe right. next time we can get to the contact. I, I, I missed that a little bit, you know. Uh, uh, today we mentioned uh, producing. You touched uh, uh, agriculture and and uh, and uh, issues uh, uh, with that. But uh, but what uh, what about there? Are, there are already farmers, and uh, and and there's logistics. You know, uh, where, where we are in Gambia, or in that in that whole area. I, I have a I have a plan and and I see no one touching it and 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 it could be a billion a billion dollar plan and feeding feeding millions of people and so and anybody I, any, I, anybody I, I, that just, just like nobody sees it if anybody have any ideas of plan we want to create a platform where they can present those and they can get other contributors and even financing for those ideas so that's what I'm doing now. You know, we have ideas. We can't keep them in our backpack, you know, tucked away. We, we have to be able to put it out there where, you know, I, you know, you got 30, 40 people wanting to do the same type of businesses. 
That sounds like a corporation right there. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, I, I discourage for anybody from coming to get getting a local business. We should be focusing on uh, manufacturing, import, you know, uh, you know, uh, this, 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 logistics, this. maritime logistics. Or, or you know, even or even wholesaling. That would be a good thing to get into. But when I see a lot of brothers and sisters, when they go to the wholesalers, it's only like small small places where they go to get their products so people can get together we can open up a big warehouse and do some real wholesale and have all the people coming to us that's what i'm talking about let me let me answer this right here right go ahead how did you not look at these two ladies and see toxic because for one simple fact i took i saw two sisters who i loved and who i wanted and i wanted story here same story here I have sisters, you know, I have sisters and, you know, <laughs> I have cousins and, you know, our sisters have been severely traumatized. They've been through a lot. They don't know who they are. They've been lost from their true self, their true identity, their true culture. They don't know their, their name. You understand what I'm saying? So we've been and hurt, we've been damaged, but we have to be there. You know, nobody's going to come out and be totally perfect. You know and it will say stay this way. It will stay this way if we don't have a seat on the world stage of power. Only then will they feel secure and protected, or and 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 uh, a future, a, a safe future. You know, they are stressed. They have they they have no one to protect them uh, uh, on a world stage. I mean, I mean, if a war is someone somewhere, uh, European. And, and America, I'm sorry, no white American exists in my mind. So European uh, warships will, 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 will go there and, and pick up the tourists and they're gone. And, and we don't have that. And, and uh, in, in the underbelly of uh, in, in, our women feel that. They know that in their underbelly. So with us, they are not safe. They are insecure. So we have to go for, will, uh, for, for global power, for a seat on the, on the world stage of economic, military, and any power well if said it's not, well, it's well not said. another goal don't don't put, well, put you know things. all of all of our organizations we want to bring those organ organizations together you know <clears throat> and you know like i said when when, at, when people were coming i was the last person really to you know uh say hey don't go and see this person and, and i still won't say that i was like hey if you want to go see that person you want to go see that person you want to go see that person? Go ahead. If you find a friend in them, that's where that's where you're supposed to be. You understand what I'm saying? But unfortunately, you know, you have, uh, like I said, there's a lot of gossip that's coming from the majority of the people who are coming there are women. You understand what I'm saying? And that's you know, uh, and my father told me, and it's nothing against the sisters. He, he told me, you know, the women, women aren't builders. You know, yeah, the, women and then one big sissy. You know, the men are the builders and the women support that system. You understand? Yes. It's, it, it, you know, and, 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 and the sisters that are coming over, like we want to focus on a youth population because, you know, you know, you can't be the dead horse. Like they say, a lot of people are just conditioned. They have this particular mindset. You know, you really have to have some strict standards, some strict rules, you know, uh, within coming in, in, into these structures. However, uh, a youth population will be much more manageable in a, uh, a, a group setting, community environment. I like to say corporate campus. We need to create corporate campus environments that's living and work environments where you can see your job out the window. You know what I mean? And you ain't got to worry about going through the hot sun in the day to go to work a half hour to an hour. We wait, you're not even coming over here getting a job like that unless you want $50 a month, $100 a month. You know what I mean? Unless you like me, you got <laughs> you got to have some income coming in. If you're talking about making, you know, uh, anything substantial, as a community, we can take in substantial revenues, but we got to be controlling containers in, uh, at the port. You, you understand what I'm saying? We can't have a little shop. You know, you can make a little little bit of money, but you know, like I said, you know, that's not my role. I'm here to help establish large scale. Uh, land development projects. That's what's up. Yep. Absolutely, okay. brother. Absolutely keeping it strong. I got my chicken down here waiting for me, brother. Okay. 
if, uh, Appreciate you, know, you bringing us on, bro. I hate to hang up, but we got to do it again. All right, brothers? Absolutely, brother. Just uh, give us a heads up and we'll join you anytime. I'll all hit right. your email. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Black all power, right. baby. Black power. All right. Peace. Peace and love, everybody. Let's keep it peace and harmony. Yes, family. All right. Peace.